Okay, so I'm here with uh, Jeff van der Kloot. Uh, Jeff, someone I've connected with over the last couple of weeks. Um, I'm really grateful for the opportunity to talk to you uh, this evening, Jeff. Um, so I wanted to ask you, uh, how have you come to be interested in thriving? Well, long story doesn't fit on a YouTube uh, video. So the short story is, I found myself in the Pacific Northwest working yes. with people on um, sustainability yes. issues, you could say. And feeling that sustainability wasn't the word, and really everyone that I've talked to in the sustainability movement would prefer another word. Um, people joke, for instance, would you want a sustainable marriage? No, you'd want, well, a thriving <laughs> marriage, okay? That wasn't the genesis of the word thrive in this context. There are people who have been talking about thriving versus sustainability right. for years. Gene Russell is one of the, the key um, exponents, you could say, of the thrive movement. And um, I had some friends suggest to me that thriving is a powerful meme, in other words, a kind of energetic concept that has a life of its own and can spread like a positive virus. And so it occurred to me, well, in the sustainability meme, if you will, you have sort of two options. One is we make it, yeah. and one is we don't. So if we don't make it, like that's pretty grim. Yes. That means species extinction. Yes. And that's fear that's, not good. that's fear <laughs> inducing. And the other scenario is is we make it, we sustain. What are we sustaining? Are we treading water? Or are we kind of barely holding on? It doesn't speak to why it is that we want to quote make it. Yeah. Um, and so my feeling was that's actually not very motivating. Got it. Uh, in the absence of some quantitative data, it feels like 50-50 chances of making it. And uh, also that the motivation comes largely from fear. So I, uh, I took this idea of thriving to heart and I realized there's a third option, which is that we make it and then some. We, uh, you know, we experience abundant resources of uh, healthy community, right. quality food, creativity, you know, lots of art, um, and creative expression in many forms, uh, and just uh, the quality of relationships people have. And that doesn't tend to get um, uh, quantified easily, but right. perhaps for that reason, actually, it's even more important than what we can quantify. So, uh, three scenarios. One is we make it and then some, you know, the, the sky's the limit. Two is, well, we don't reach the sky, but we, we clear the bar to mix metaphors, and, and we certainly don't go extinct. Yes. And the third scenario is, despite maybe even our best efforts, yes. we, uh, we don't make it. So now we have three scenarios, two of which are positive, yes. uh, one of which is stellar, yes. and, uh, and one of which is grim. But the chances already feel better than 50-50, yeah. and one speaks to why we want to make it. So my hypothesis was that the thriving um, framework mm. would be ten times as motivating uh, compared to the sustaining framework. So I started talking to people in the Northwest, in particular on Whidbey Island, in Seattle, uh, in the San Juan Islands, in Bellingham, kind of anywhere I could go uh, you know, within a day. Uh, and I asked people about thriving, and people got excited. So now there are all these conversations going on that, that I've helped to see with others, and, uh, and indeed little organizations uh, that are forming around the possibility of thriving. So in Lake Forest Park, which is north of Seattle, it's a community of about 12,000 people. Right. A group of grandparents are getting together, community elders, uh, this coming Wednesday, and they're going to have essentially a town meeting with the youth in the community and say, you know, we want to thrive. Fantastic. What are your visions to right. the youth? What are your visions? of a thriving Lake Forest Park. And one of the reasons that they're, they're coming out at this time is there's a political campaign that's going on right now, a ballot initiative, which has been very, very divisive, has polarized the community in ugly ways. And there, there's an opportunity to uh, bring about some social healing using this concept of thriving. Now, no one disagrees with thriving. A lot of people disagree with sustainability. For instance, people think uh, you know, climate change is not happening, or right. if it is happening, it's not caused by people. Right. You know, it's something that's uh, you know, natural, uh, naturally occurring in nature, obviously in nature. Yeah. So, um, the idea of sustainability doesn't necessarily resolve the fundamental issues of community fragmentation and polarization. Thriving, on the other hand, is something that everybody wants. Can get behind, right? And maybe it means different things to different people, but fundamentally it's positive mm. and it's a unifying principle. Yeah. So I'm very interested in unifying principles. Uh, I've now come to Napa Valley yep. in the Bay Area to work with uh, a bunch of other people who are interested in thriving. I was attracted to the Napa Valley in part because I met people who were talking about the Thrive meme, uh, 
one of whom is a philanthropist, so yeah. you know, she she indicated uh, an ability to support thriving work, which is important. And um, you know, these people are coming from a place of heart, yeah. And so it feels like it's uh, it's grounded and authentic. Also, Napa Valley has um, a global profile, so yes. if we can work it out, uh, then we have uh, a great message that can spread globally. So there's kind of a platform in Napa Valley for more than just wine. And actually, one of the reasons that we might want to bring about more thriving in the Napa Valley is you have a lot of community polarization, a lot of fragmentation. You have um, a community that's roughly 50% uh, Anglo, 50% Latino, rough right. numbers, but actually majority Latino in the younger generation in the schools. Right. And uh, the two communities largely don't communicate. You have uh, the Chamber of Commerce, then you have the Hispanic Chamber of Do Commerce. Do you really? How interesting. Yeah. You also don't have a lot of African Americans. Um, I think Napa Valley was one of the last places to um, to do away with what's called redlining, which is a practice that would restrict uh, the flow of uh, minorities into a place. Right. I only recently learned about this. Uh, you know, if true, it's certainly disheartening. But it's also interesting because we can, um, you know, we can undertake projects that bring people together in the Napa Valley and really test this uh, premise that thriving is a unifying principle. Yes. Can I ask you? two things. One is to say a little bit about what you think some of the top line features are of a, th of a thriving community or how one might discern what the domains of thriving or well-being that one might look at. Um, and secondly, just to say anything on, on economics and how that fits in with this. Right. Well, I guess I'll start by saying that economics is one uh, dimension or right. one aspect of thriving. It tends to be the one that gets focused on the most. So people think about uh, financial prosperity as an indicator of thriving. But you also use the word well-being, and well-being is much more embracing, much more it's inclusive much more yeah. than, than economic uh, success. And indeed, there is an initiative out of Seattle called the Happiness Initiative that we're yeah. considering bringing to the Napa Valley, which measures well-being in now 10 different domains. So one is economic, one is a time balance, so work-life balance. Um, quality of the environment, um, you know, quality of local government, is local government trustworthy, uh, oh, community vitality, that's five and there are five more. Uh, so the ability to uh, look at well-being holistically and if there is well-being, substantial de a substantial degree of well-being in, in most of those categories, preferably yes. all of them, then we can begin to speak about thriving. Right. Talk about a community that has, in a sense, self-actualized. Wow. What a vision. Uh, and I know that you've mentioned that there are a few communities that are starting to look at local currencies. Right. Uh, could you say just a quick bit about that? So there are a bunch of them, and I'm not an expert, but nearby there is a community called Fairfax in right. Marin County. And they've uh, created the Fair Buck, which I actually almost had with me today. Right. It's a uh, kind of, it's not a gold coin, but it looks gold. Yeah. And it's worth three U.S. dollars. Right. And it can only be traded locally. So you can go to any of the stores in Fairfax and use it, I think pretty much universally. Uh, and if you needed to change it into dollars, you could. But the benefit of the fare buck is that it keeps money circulating locally. Mm -hmm. uh, and in this uh, phase of economic relocalization, which we're seeing, it's already happening, we'll see more and more uh, local currencies that facilitate keeping the money ho at home. Yeah, fantastic. Well, thanks for that whirlwind tour of thriving. We will look forward to uh, talking more. So thanks for taking the time Thank today. Thank you, Jack. Cheers. Perfect. Cheers.